My name is Lau. I am from Vietnamese. I am Vietnam, mm -hmm. Vietnam. Yeah. And what are you up to this weekend? Do you have any plans? Can you hear me? Mm, not clearly. <laughs> okay. Am I cutting out, guys? No. No? No, pretty clear. Okay. Um okay. Um Cecilia? Hi Cecilia. Hi, hi. I'm from Montevideo, Uruguay, a small country in South America between Argentina and Brazil. And this weekend I'm planning to meet with a, a ex classmate who started teaching to share his annual class plan. So we are going to work and I hope to overcome a little virus I caught this week. So I couldn't, I worked on Monday. I'm going to class Monday and Tuesday, but I had to, and Wednesday, but I had to come to home. I had to come home and I saw the doctor yesterday who subscribed me to stay home, not to teach to go on teaching. So I hope I'm better and I can do something on Sundays, which at least is going two blocks away to the promenade and walk a little <coughs> and the weather's better. I don't know. Hopefully the weather will be nice. Hope so because it's been a little uh, stormy and windy and rainy. <laughs> hope so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it always rains a lot in April. The change, yes, the change of season, yes. Here yeah. is autumn and it brought a lot of storm, yes. Thank it you. just always rains in Paris, but it's it's, it's been <laughs> raining the last few days, so hopefully that'll stop. Mm -hmm. Cool, okay. okay. Um, hi, Hoi Yan. Hello. What are you up to this weekend? Um, yeah, I think I'll continue with my driving lesson. With what, sorry? Of uh, driving. I'm oh yeah, you're still. Are you still working on that? How's it coming? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was a little scared last time, but yeah, okay. You you get more comfortable as you practice, right? Yes. I'm still scared. <laughs> I'm like a very nervous driver because I'm always worried that like someone's gonna come out and hit me or something. So I don't really drive. My mom. My mom. She was, she uh sat in. In the um, taxi, and she like drove more slowly. <laughs> like she was so scared, she was intimidated because I like I drove too fast. So you're like a really fast driver. <laughs> I think I'm yeah. I'm more like a granny driver. I'm like really slow. <laughs> but you know, mothers are usually overprotective. Like it's not that we're really fast, but she was really. Or, or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Um, Birkin, that picture is funny. Birkin put up a funny picture. Um, Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Nasser? Hello again. Yes. Hello. What are you up to? Long time. Long time. I'm actually, no I'm working here. Actually, uh, I graduated from uh, university, and um, now um, working in a production company, uh, designing 3D and you know making movies. So uh, there is no weekends for me. It's just a Friday. I spend it sleeping, holiday, because you know, yeah, <laughs> my weekend is just a sleeping. Nothing I can do. Okay. Cool. Yeah, exactly. All right. And hi Van Lang. Long time no see. Hi. Are you there? I feel like people have a bit of a delay. I don't know what what's going on. Um Firkin, what are you up to this weekend? I'm up to I'm gonna shave my hair off. Probably. 
Are you going to be completely bald? No, not not that. One. If I say shave my hair off, doesn't mean like completely bald. If you say you're going to shave your head, it means like bald. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just say you're going to cut your hair. <laughs> yeah, then cut my hair. Because... Get a haircut. Get a haircut or cut cut your hair. Yeah. No, it would be horrible. <laughs> uh, probably, and then I will visit a naval museum. And we'll work some SAT subject test. So you're going to take it in May? Is that yeah. what you said? When's the next test date? Fourth of May. You're rushing. <laughs> Are you? Is it because you're trying to get in school for September, or? Mm, I'm gonna try my luck. Okay, I'm sure you'll do fine. I've never had to take the SAT, so I don't know exactly what um, happens with it. We don't have to do SATs for Canadian schools, um, but I know people study pretty hard for it. They'll sit there with like big SAT books, and I've seen them in the library, like studying and practicing. So, um, get to At it. Least I have an advantage. <laughs> I already finished. I already finished that for uh, last year. So, all I have to do is translating to English. Oh, okay. That's good. Um, okay, so today we're talking about um, intonation and stress on words. So. You may have noticed that some of our lessons reset and we're starting back at lesson one. So um, that's what's happening for this class. So if you've already, it, it might look familiar. You might have already done it. So um, if it's review, then that's probably okay. I mean, it's always good to review. Um, if it's new, great. But um, if you're wondering why some of the material looks the same, it's because we're starting over. <laughs> So we have some of the same materials for this lesson as we did, I guess it would have been 12 weeks ago maybe? Um, I don't know how many weeks, but a while ago. So today we're talking about intonation and stress, um, when to emphasize or stress a word, and then we'll be doing some practice with um, saying sentences. So... Um, Share my screen. <laughs> Emphasizing a word. So listen to these sentences and notice how the underlined words are easier to hear than the other words. We'll be arriving tomorrow. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Maybe I'll say that one again. I don't know. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Um, you look great. She lives in Toronto now. Is the baby walking yet? Follow that car. We'll be arriving tomorrow. You look great. She lives in Toronto now. Is the baby walking yet? Follow that car. So if you notice when we're speaking at a natural pace, um, a lot of these words kind of, di they don't disappear, but they get a little bit blended together. Um, and then the focus word in the sentence tends to stand out a little bit more than the other words. Sometimes it's very subtle. Um, and sometimes it's more outright, like in, in number five. Follow that car. It's more obvious which one is standing out. Um, and a pronunciation note about Toronto, we usually don't pronounce the T. <laughs> it just sounds like this. Toronto. Um, when you're from Canada, that's just how like, Toronto is not usually pronounced with a T. Um, so we're emphasizing the words that are underlined and they'll be easier to hear than the other words but the problem is how do you figure out which word is emphasized and which word isn't um, in a sentence so um, the underlined words in these sentences are easier to hear I think I can make this a bit bigger yes are easier to hear because they've been given extra emphasis um, extra emphasis is added to a word by making the vowel in the stressed syllable extra long and very clear, or adding a pitch change to the stressed syllable. This means that you make the pitch of your voice rise or fall on the stressed syllable. So listen to them again. Um, I won't read them a second time, but 
um, you can either elongate the vowel sounds or you can change your pitch. So that's when your voice, when you're talking like this, and then your voice goes up and goes back down. So the word that you're emphasizing, your pitch is usually rising, and that's making it stand out more when people are listening. Um, if you don't ever change your pitch, you talk like this all the time and you sound monotone and you're not really emphasizing any words and it's really boring and no one wants to pay any attention to what you're saying. Right? So if you've ever had a professor like that talks like that, does that sound familiar? I've had some teachers who talk like that <laughs> and it's bad. <laughs> you you like feel like you're falling asleep in class, right? So that's um, how people talk when they're not really using any pitch. They're not really changing their pitch at all. Um, it's not very endearing. You don't want to talk like that, right? So it's a good idea to make sure you're kind of raising and lowering your pitch. And when you do raise it, um, that usually falls on a stressed syllable. So the way you can figure out um, which word to stress is um, by knowing how to find the focus word. So maybe how about um, Cecilia, would you like to read this for us? Yes, sure. <clears throat> in each short sentence or clause, there is a focus word. The focus word is the most important word. English speakers help listeners notice the focus word by giving it uh, the most emphasis. Ka is the focus word in the following sentence. It must be emphasized so that the hearer no, so that the hearer, yeah, hearer. the hearer can notice it easily. Follow the car. Listen and notice how the stress syllable of the focus word is extra long and clearer and has a pitch change. Good. So car is the focus word. Follow that car and you say it a little bit more loudly. Um, now, when we did this class last time, someone pointed out that car might not always be the focus word. So the thing, too, is that sometimes the focus word will change depending on the context. If, you're, if you want someone to chase a particular car, you might say, follow that car, right? Yeah, exactly. So That's it can sometimes change depending on the context, but this is kind of just a general rule about focus words um, and it does sometimes change it just kind of depends like normally you would say follow that car like follow, like you follow it now but if if this the context has changed a little bit then you might say follow that car not that car <laughs> that car right so it it can kind of depend um, haven't I said you to kill that beast why is it still alive Oh, Firkin, you can't say, haven't I said you. You have to say, haven't yeah. I told you. Oh. <laughs> or haven't I said. But you can't say said you. Um, what is that from? Is that from a movie or something? No. No. Okay. So um, generally speaking, we emphasize the focus word. So it's a pretty good general rule. Um, if the context is different, you'll know that the context is different and you'll you'll kind of know which word to emphasize in that case but generally speaking we emphasize the or stress the focus word follow that car <laughs> so it's saying listen and notice how it's usually the vowel that is elongated I don't say follow that car or follow that <laughs> car right <laughs> that's not how it works you, you emphasize and stretch out the word by lengthening the vowel Follow that car. Do you mean the blue one? Not do you mean the blue one? Or do you mean the bluey one? <laughs> or b -b 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 blue one? That's not, how, that's not how it works, right? So you mm -hmm. emphasize words by stretching the vowel sound. Um, and you change the pitch. Follow that car. Do you mean the blue one? So music of English. Oh, hi, Sandra. Sandra's back. Nice to see you. Okay, <laughs> how are you, everyone? Good, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. 
Nice to see you again. Um, so listen to, to these sentences, and they've called this the music of English. <laughs> so listen to these sentences and notice how the focus words are emphasized. The stressed syllable of each focus word has a change in pitch and a long, clear vowel sound. So you have to kind of be aware of um, how English sounds when it's being spoken naturally and how our voices rise and fall because it's different in different languages. Um, I don't speak Italian, but if any, you're wearing glasses. <laughs> yeah, again. Glasses. Um, it would be like this. You're wearing glasses. Not you're wearing glasses. <laughs> um, but in Italian, for example, they, they rise their pitch at the end of the sentence. And it's like the last few syllables are rise. It's a very beautiful language, and I love listening to it. It's completely different from English. We don't um, add emphasis that way to the very end of the sentence, and then usually it goes just near the end, and then it drops back down most of the time, unless you're yeah. making an expressive statement like "follow that car." In that case, it'll and finish at the end. But in natural sentences, when you're just talking, um, you don't usually end on a risen note. You know one phrase in Italian. Can you say it for us? Questa in pace. No idea. What did you say? <laughs> uh, RIP. Uh, I have some Italian friends and um, they all have really interesting accents. Yeah, it's cool, I think. Yeah. Um, so, for example, you look confused. So, not only do I stretch the U, but my pitch raises. You look confused. Confused. So your pitch raises when you're saying it. You don't say, you look confused, and then <laughs> finish it on a very high note. Otherwise, it sounds like you're falling off a cliff, and it's like, you look confused, right? <laughs> and you kind of disappear. So you don't want to... You don't want to finish on that high note. It's it comes just before the end. Okay? That's because I lost my glasses. That's because I lost my glasses. So your pitch raises on the A, you stretch the A, but then you come back down. So um I want you guys to each say both of these sentences. Um especially when you're swearing. Yeah. Totally. When you swear, your swear words are always like the focus words in the sentence. They're always emphasized. I won't give you any examples of that, though. Um, so I want you guys to try <laughs> reading both of these sentences. Um, let's start with uh, Nasser. Okay. You look confused. That's become... That's because I lost my glasses. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so you Spike went team. way up there. <laughs> my glasses. <laughs> so you don't have to raise yeah. it too, too, too much. But that, that was really good. You've got the right idea for sure. It's good. Um, and you'll notice because this sentence, this second one is longer, see how it starts up a little bit higher than this one? So when it's longer, it's because you're taking a longer time to say it. So you're more like, that's because I lost my glasses. So it's kind of falling down a little bit, and then it raises up right before the end. With you look confused, the sentence isn't long enough for it to do that. <laughs> so depending on the length of your sentence, um, it's almost like you're running out of breath, right? <laughs> so you start up kind of high, and then as you run out of breath, your, your pitch kind of drops, and then you quickly peak at the end. Um, that was really good, Nasser. Thanks. Um, Lang, would you like to read the two sentences? Lang. Okay. Birkin? Okay. You look confused. That's because I lost my glasses. Yep. Idiot? <laughs> what? Did you say idiot? <laughs> that was unknown. Yeah, that was good. So, um, perfect. Sandra, would you like to read the two sentences? Oh, sure, of course. Oh, I can't see anything about the text. If Samantha? You, yes, now, yes. You I, look confused. 
that's because I love my glasses. Good, very good. Perfect. Um, who's next? Alam? Yes, teacher. It's your turn. Yes. Uh, you look confused. That's because I was my class. Good, very good. And Cecilia? You look confused. That's because you look. That's because I lost my glasses. Very good. And Ryan? You look confused. That's because I lost my glasses. Good. Perfect. So, um, we won't do it again. <laughs> I think once is enough. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at what the difference is between focus and content words and how to figure out which ones to emphasize. So content words, um, actually how about, uh, Hoyan, would you like to read this for us? All of these words? Yeah, or just, co just, yeah, content okay. words. Content words are words that carry the most, in the most information in a sentence. Nouns, mean verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and question words are content words. Here are some examples from each category. Nouns, cat, bus, glasses. Main verbs, run, read, eat, adverb, suddenly, carefully, slowly. Adjectives, fresh, green, confused, question words, who, what, how. Good. So, content words are basically the important words in the sentence, the ones that carry a lot of meaning. Things like articles are not content words, and the, the they're not content words. Um, pronouns are not content words. So the words that don't carry as much weight in the sentence are generally not content words. So words like nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and question words, those are the content words. And the focus word is usually a content word. So that's how you can kind of determine um, where your voice should be raising and where you should start to emphasize um, a syllable in the sentence. It, it will almost always be a content word that you're emphasizing. So thinking of content words, let's brainstorm a little bit. They gave us some. What are some other nouns that would be a content word? Hedgehog. <laughs> okay. Sure. Hedgehog. Just maybe three. Can we come what up with a me? What is a hedgehog? I'll show yeah. you. It's easier to show you a picture, I think. Have you heard of Sonic the Hedgehog? Oh, oh cute. Oh, he's so cute. Look at the <laughs> little baby. <laughs> so that's a hedgehog. Kind of like a porcupine. Mm. Or, or we have Sonic, the hedgehog. <laughs> oh, I know this one. Yeah. Thank you. So, what are some other nouns that you would emphasize in a sentence? Virgin. <laughs> Sorry. Did you say Virgin? Yes. <laughs> okay. If you his name in a sentence, that's possible. Yeah, usually you would emphasize someone's name. Yes. What about, I don't know, just do it, come on guys, a random noun. Mobile. Mobile. Okay. Car, computer. Quick. Car, computer, Anything. right, exactly, so nouns. Um, main verbs, walk, run. Kill. Kill, okay. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep, okay. Um, what, are some, what are some other odd verbs? Ever. Accidentally. Frequently. Exactly. Friendly. Normally. Okay. Unintentionally. Um, and some adjectives? Dark. Great. Awesome. Wonderful. Amazing. Good. And some question words. I think there's only a certain number of question words, right? Who, what, yes. when, where, why, how, um, which. Um, 
So those are all types of words that you would be emphasizing, more likely to emphasize in sentences, content words, the meat of your sentence. Now you can't emphasize every single content word or your sentence is going to sound really funny. So the next thing you need to do is determine which one is the focus word. Which one do you need to focus on? The focus words in these ones are underlined. Um, each one is in a different, different category of content words. So my cat eats fish. My cat eats fish. He loves it. He loves it. But only fresh fish. But only fresh fish. He eats slowly. I don't know why he eats that way. Cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, here are some more sentences. My cat eats fish. He loves it. But only fresh fish. He eats slowly. And you might notice that I even say slowly, kind of slowly. That sometimes happens when you're reading a word that means, so instead of saying he eats slowly, I'm saying he eats slowly. So when you say the word slow, you say it slowly, which is kind of something. I don't know. Um, I don't know why he eats that way. So you see how we can sometimes emphasize a question word, adverb, adjective, main verb, or noun. But you might look at this sentence and wonder, um, so why are we emphasizing fish when there's also a verb and another noun? <laughs> So that's where it starts to become a little bit, try to say quickly, slowly. <laughs> I can't. Um, so it depends on where the noun falls in the sentence. Usually if there's two nouns, you're more likely to emphasize the one that falls at the end. But again, this is going to depend a little bit on the context. Because if you're talking about two cats, maybe my cat and your cat, and you say, um, my cat eats... Um, I don't know, my cat drinks milk. I'd say, well, well my cat eats fish. And then you'd be emphasizing my as well because you want to emphasize that it's your cat. My cat eats fish. Like, follow that car, right? So it does depend a little bit on the context. Um, but usually we're emphasizing one of these types of words rather than the less important words like my, he. In number three, you might have noticed that my but only, when I say it, it blends together, right? But only fresh fish. But only fresh fish. That is natural speed for me, to say it like that. So what happens, again, is you have the consonant um, coming right before a vowel, and the two words blend together and sound like this. See what happens? So it goes from but only to but only, to but only, where it sounds like a D, because it all of a sudden becomes like a T in the middle of a word. And if you remember from pronunciation classes, in American English, the T in the middle of a word sounds like a D, right? Like butter. Sounds like butter. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens here. But, but only turns into but only. <laughs> and it becomes very blended, and you're not emphasizing it but only fresh fish. You're emphasizing that the fish is fresh. He eats slowly. Um, under no circumstances you will be able to eat. What do you mean? <laughs> Your pet fish? Do you have a pet fish? <laughs> um, there's our cat. So let's take a look at this exercise. Add a content word to each sentence. The content word you add will be the focus word. So I can't pick a verb, any verb. Limp. <laughs> Limp, okay. I can't play. I can't play. So I can't. then I want you to say it. How would you, if you know that it is your focus word and your main word in your sentence, how are you going to, pron how are you going to read out that sentence? How would you pronounce it? Would you say, I can't play? Probably not. So how, how would you emphasize? I can't play. Good. Perfect. I can't play. I can't limp. Whenever you say you can't do something, it often sounds like you're complaining a little bit in your tone. I can't yeah. run. I can't walk. I can't cook. Right? 
So you emphasize the verb. It's the main word in your sentence. Um, what about number two? He's riding a... My, a horse. A, horse. a car? Or a bike. You can't ride a car. You drive, you drive a car. <laughs> but you ride a, ride a motorcycle. <laughs> if you're riding a car... You're like sitting on top of the car, like <laughs> <laughs> while someone else drives. So that's probably not advisable. Um, but how would you pronounce "ride a moose"? Oh, come on! So he, he's riding. He's riding a bike. How would you pronounce that? He's riding a bike. He's riding a bike. He's riding a bike. So you don't necessarily have to sound surprised, right? It is a little bit subtle. You don't have to say, he's riding a bike. <laughs> he's riding a bike. It's not, you're not that excited about his bike that he's riding. Yeah. So you just want your tone to increase just a little bit. So he's riding a bike. He's riding a bike. Yeah, my voice, even though I'm not kind of yelling it out, your, your tone is still r lifting. So the difference between he's riding a bike and he's riding a bike different. He's riding a bike. He's riding a bike. He's riding a bike. <laughs> it sounds very dull and like ro robotic. So even when you just lift your tone just a little bit, um, it makes a big difference in the sentence. And it makes you sound more natural. You don't want to sound like a robot. Um, number three, the baby is... I'm a little afraid of what words you guys are going to choose. Crying. 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 Good. The baby oh. is cry the baby is crying. It's How crying. do you read that? The baby, baby is crying. That's me the reading it monotone. Cecilia, crying. good. The baby yeah. standing. The baby is standing. The baby the ba is crying. The baby is crying. The baby is crying. The baby is crying. The baby is crying. You're not like the baby is crying. <laughs> it's like, whoa, okay. <laughs> the baby is crying. Like, well, why are you yelling then? You're going to wake him up. So <laughs> the baby is crawling. The baby is crawling. The baby is sleeping. But sometimes uh, when you are excited, it's like the baby, when he like talk for the first time, he was like exciting. Yeah, the baby so is if you're talking. Really excited, you are so really happy. And the baby is walking. So, yeah. <laughs> But if you're just kind of stating something, you don't have to always, you have yeah. to be careful that you want to raise your pitch, but you don't want to always sound excited, <laughs> or you'll sound a little bit crazy to people, right? <laughs> the baby is crawling and walking. Sound annoying sometimes. And sleeping. It's like, oh my, <laughs> calm down. So <laughs> you want to just kind of lift it just a bit, um, just to add some dimension to what you're to your saying. Um, number four, please hand me the gun. The gun, really? Oh my god! How about god. something else? Please hand me the pen. Salt. The, the candy? Did someone say candy? <laughs> so how how about this? Please hand me the pen. Hand me the pen. Please hand me the candy. How would you say that? Please hand me the candy. You said that already. Please hand me the candy. Please hand me the candy. Please. Please hand me the candy. Like Not please hand me the candy. No, that's a bit much, right? She's um, your mother. If you wanted to emphasize please, like you're begging someone, then you'd be like, please hand me the candy. But yeah. you probably, that wouldn't be like a normal sentence, um, a neutral sentence. It depends, again, on the context. What about number five? The food... It's not salty. Spicy. Okay. So read the sentence I typed in the chat. The food is too much. It's much too salty. It's much too salty. Perfect, Ryan. That was perfect. So I, <laughs> I, I don't think I can read them first because then you guys can hear. It's very hard for me not to raise to use intonation <laughs> because it's um for me it's natural. So I don't want you guys to hear it and then mimic me. I, I want to make sure you're, you know how to do it. Um, what about number six? Can you come up with a sentence for number six? Where? Where she's going. Okay, and then how would you read the whole sentence? 
She's not I'm not sure. sure where she's going. Good. I'm not sure where she's going. I'm not sure why she's, she's going. going. She's going. Um, number I'm seven. He drives. Callously. Of course. Callously. Callously. Good. Now, how would you say the whole sentence? He drives carelessly. Good. So you just raise it on that first vowel, right? He drives carelessly. Good. Okay. Um, that's the end of that document. So let me get out my other one. Do you guys have questions? About when to stress? Um, I noticed that when it comes to a negative sentence. When it comes to a like negative American sentence? Yeah, Americans and like English speakers also emphasize the yeah, not. Yeah, you usually yeah. emphasize not. He's not driving carelessly. The baby isn't walking. Usually if a sentence is negative, you emphasize the negative word in the sentence. I did not have a relationship with that woman. Yes, we want to get into politics. Um, okay, so, I'm just trying to, okay, so content or function words. So, we want to take a look, oh, turned into a, at these words, and I want you to tell me if they're a content word or a function word. So, we talked about what content words are, right? Content yes. words are like the verbs, nouns, etc., the main words. And a function word is a word that's just kind of there to make everything keep um, keep together and run smoothly in the sentence. But it's not a main word. So, <laughs> magazine is a content word. Many would probably be a function word. What about went? Content. Content. With? Function. 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 Just? Fun function. function. Quickly? Content. Function. Content. Function. Function. Fun. A content. Function. Uh, <laughs> is that content or function? Function. 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 Good. Hard. Content. 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 Next to. Function. 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 Content, content. Function. Function. How do you pronounce content? Is content. 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 It depends. Content. If you say content, it's like this sort of thing. A content word. Um, a content. table of contents. But if you say content, it means happy. Uh, okay, so if you say, um, in this case, we're talking about content words or the main words. If you're reading a book, it has a table table of contents, right? The contents of something are the what is a part of something. The pieces of something are the contents. Um, the contents of this mug. Coffee. <laughs> this mug contains coffee, right? Um, but if you're saying I am feeling content today, it means I'm feeling happy. Content. So. If you emphasize the first syllable versus the second syllable, it changes the meaning of the word. Yeah. So it's content in, in, for this one. Um, for it's for content or function. 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 Information. Content. 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 In order to. Function. 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 You probably notice it just by the way I, I said it, actually. Um, whenever you have like three, two or three little words, like together, same with next to, I blend them together. Next to. In order to. Like, in order turns into one word. In order to. In front of. It doesn't, as, the T disappears, and I'm saying in front of, instead of in front of, right? So that's something we do with function words. When there's a but a cluster of function words, they all blend together a little bit, in order to. Um, difficult. Content. Content. Sorry. Much. 
function. Function. Exacting. What's that? Function. Ah, ex exacting is a verb, no? Yes. Uh, content. Yes. In front of? Function. Oops. They were asking, asking for exacting. Oh, uh, of, of what exacting is? Yes. Um, exacting, um, to exact is to pay a lot of attention to something or to someone's skills. So if you could say that um, someone is, I could say, Ah, I'm is an exacting instructor. So that means that I make very rigorous demands and I'm very strict. Like, mm -hmm. I'm exacting. Okay. Um, but it's not very common. Stern, yeah. Not, not the most common word. Um, Jack? Canton. Yeah, someone's name is usually a content word. He? Content. No. Oh. No, uh, no, it's a pronoun. Function. Function, function yeah, pronouns. However, a function. Good. Perfect. Unless, depending on the context with however, right? If you really want to emphasize that you're, um, like in a debate, you might say, yes, I see your point. However, and then you make your own point. So it depends on the context, but if, ho if however falls in the middle of a sentence, then you would kind of breeze over it. It would be more of a function word. So it depends on if it's in the middle or at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so identification and practice. Is this big enough? I might be able to. No, it's too small. It's too big. It's too big. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's never too big. <laughs> no, it's really nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> mark the stressed words in the following sentences after you found them. So um, we've got multiple sentences. There isn't always just one. I mean, if you have a really long sentence, you're going to have more than one word that you're emphasizing. Um, I wouldn't just say we are going to work on our homework together. You're, you're more likely, there's going to be another word in here somewhere that will be emphasized a little bit, right? So let's take a look and I'm going to get out my red and I will bold the words um, that we should be stressing and then we'll practice reading them, okay? So let's take a look at the first one. Um, I don't really want to read this because I want you guys to try to determine without hearing me. So in the first sentence, which which word would be emphasized, do you think? Coming. Tonight. Uh, I would say John. 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 No. Tonight. Tonight. John. John. Try John. saying the sentence out loud and see what comes out. Yeah. John is coming over. John is coming over tonight. Our work on our homework together. John coming tonight. John. John. Yes, I am. Coming over. Coming Coming. John, coming tonight. Is it easier without over? What about this? John is coming tonight. John, coming tonight. John and coming without tonight. Coming. So, which word are we emphasizing? I'm hearing you guys all do it pretty much correctly. I just don't know if you can hear it yourself. So. You which word is John. being emphasized? John. John coming. Tonight. John. John coming tonight. Coming. John is coming tonight. Tonight. Yeah, night. night. John is coming tonight. tonight. John is coming tonight. John is coming tonight. Tonight wouldn't be emphasized. Tonight is kind of just the end of your sentence. 
Um, you're emphasizing the verb, and you might emphasize his name, um, but you're definitely emphasizing the verb. We are going to war. Definitely emphasizing coming. John is coming tonight. John is coming tonight. Okay. Um, let's look at the next one. <coughs> There's more than one, okay? So don't don't feel restricted to one focus word. There's multiple yeah. focus words. Yeah. We are going. We work. Work. Homework. We. Homework. Going. Work. Homework. Our homework. Going. Here's, here's work. one. Work. Together. I, I would cluster going to work. Cluster it like this? Yes, I think so. Go, gonna work, go, going to work. Okay, going so if we work. turn it into gonna, then that's different, right? Yes, gonna work. We're gonna work? So yes. if, if, you were, gonna work. if you actually say we are going to work, it's different than yes. we are gonna work. As soon as you say gonna, everything turns a little bit blurred, right? Yes. Um, so, but if we're looking at it as going to, let yes. me see what's happening in the chat. We work homework. Okay, so Hoyan, not we. Mm -hmm. Not we, because um, we is a pronoun, and we don't really emphasize them. So if you have we, they, he, she, it, <coughs> um, they're function words, so not emphasized. Unless you're like, he did it. <laughs> then you're going to emphasize. If you're like pointing a finger at someone, pointing a but if it's just part of a sentence, they're not emphasized. Okay, try saying work. it, looking at it like this. We're going to work on our homework together. We're going to work on our homework together. John is coming to work. We're going, going to work. Homework. Going. We're going. going to work on our homework. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to work on our homework together. So notice how because going comes before work, I'm emphasizing going and not work. And to work on is is getting clustered. So I see what you're saying, Cecilia, with the cluster, but before before it clusters, we need to emphasize this verb. So we emphasize Damn. going and then we cluster to work on. To work on. Okay. And okay. to work on ends up almost sounding like one word, right? To work on. Okay, okay. Right. Not only because I, I was remembering that we should emphasize the main word, yeah. the main verb. That, that's right, right. So. Right. So we're emphasizing going. Um, you could possibly emphasize work if you're, it depends if you're speaking <clears throat> more slowly. If you're speaking quickly or at a natural pace, you probably would brush over work because it's, sandwiched between these two um, function words. So you would brush over it. We're going to work on our homework together. But if you said it more slowly, we're going to work on our homework together. So if you're saying it slowly, you're going to have more, more um, focus words. When you say it naturally or quickly, because naturally we do speak pretty quickly, um, you're not going to have as many focus words. So we're going to work on our homework together. Um, what about this one? Stasi is an Try extremely me. dangerous drive. Extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Extremely. Extremely dangerous and ecstasy. But I, I would emphasize ecstasy. Stasi is extremely what about dangerous and drugs? Yes, I would, I would emphasize yes. dangerous. 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 Good. So, <laughs> ecstasy is an extremely dangerous drug. Extremely dangerous drug. Mm -hmm. Ex extreme extremely. Yes. Extreme dangerous, dangerous drugs. Right? Yes. So, can you try yes. to say that out loud? But don't overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> Just at a natural kind of, right? <laughs> How would you say that? Stress is an extremely dangerous drug. Very extremely good. Extremely dangerous drug. Extremely dangerous drug. Extremely dangerous drug. Good. Dangerous. Um, here's a I have a question. 
Yeah, sure. Um, does the u is a function? U is a function, or mm -hmm. it is a content? U. Yeah. Function. So uh, I, you said you cannot emphasize um, the functions. So I cannot emphasize you sometimes. Usually you are not, like, unless unless. There, unless the word you is the main word in the sentence based on the context. So if we're solving a mystery murder, it was you, right? All yeah. of a sudden you becomes important. But besides other than that type of context, you would you would kind of brush over you. You, me, he, we, they. You you tend to brush yeah. over them. So any sort of pronouns, they're generally not emphasized. They're function words, which mean that they contribute to the sentence functioning pro properly, but they're not main or content words that are actually about what the sentence means. So usually, you wouldn't um, emphasize you. So like, for example, like in, in this next one, you would not emphasize we or we, right? Yeah. You wouldn't say, you. we should have visited more castles while we were traveling. It doesn't sound natural to emphasize the words that, that aren't essential to the sentence. Um, but let's take a look at this one. A visited castles. A tra traveling. Why are we traveling? France, uh, but France. France can be can be. You said the no. end. No more cars. But France. So France. if if you were emphasizing France, you yes. wouldn't want to end on the high. You wouldn't go France. <laughs> you have to go France yeah. and come back down, right? Mm -hmm. So it can't. You can't emphasize the last word. It. You just have to be careful about the syllables. You don't want to mm -hmm. go. The back roads of France. Because it sounds awkward to stay up that high. So you have to l make sure you let your voice drop back down. So um, we can emphasize France. Let's see, how, let's see how it sounds like this. We should have... Actually, I'll get you guys to do it. <laughs> no, we, perhaps it's the back roads instead of... Okay. And back roads is sometimes... Cluster. One word as well. Back roads. Okay, let's take a look and see how this sounds. Um, maybe, Hoyan, could you give it a shot first for us? Hoyan. Are you there? Okay. Nasser? Yes. What is can the you, question? Can you just try to read it out loud for us with those content yeah. words that we've... Yeah, sure. We should have visited some more castles. We were traveling through the backwards of France. Good. That was really good. Um, Sandra, could you try it for us? Yes, sure. We should have visited some more castles. Well, well we were traveling through the broad roads on France. Can you say this one for me once more? Back roads? Back roads. Back roads. Yes, that was better. Back roads, good. Um, of France. Cecilia? We should have visited some more castles while we were traveling through the back roads of France. Good, perfect. We should have visited some more castles while we were traveling through the back roads of France. So see how um, when I'm saying it, my my pitch isn't raising a huge amount, right? It's not like going off the charts high at these points. But it is raising enough to give my voice some dimension. So the difference between we should have visited some more castles while traveling through the back roads of France and we should have visited some more castles while traveling through the back roads of France. So you can see how it's not like a huge exaggeration. But even just a little bit of pitch change, can, it can really help um, your emphasis. Now, listen to me reading this and emphasizing the wrong words, and you'll hear how, you're going to hear how awkward it sounds, okay? 
We should have visited some more castles while, tra while we were traveling through the back roads of France. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? <laughs> it, sounds <Yeah>. really <laughs> it sounds really uncomfortable, right? It's not natural at all. So you can see how um, you naturally kind of breeze over these, what we call function words. And they blend together. We should have. We should have turns into we should have. We should have. Sounds Some like more. we should have, right? Some more. Some, Some more turns into mm -hmm. the more, mm -hmm. right? So the function words, when they're back to back like this, they blend, right? Mm -hmm. And the content words tend to stick out. Mm -hmm. um, let's try one more. <clears throat> Jack bought a new car. Must ready. Car maybe. Bought. Jack bought new car. Last Friday. Bought yes. and last. Car. Jack bought. Jack bought a car last Friday. Jack bought. Yes, I would say Friday. Too. What about Friday? I would say Friday. Okay. And and learn. No, last Friday. Yep. Friday. Exactly. So, but Fry, it's Fry, Fry. Friday. Yeah. Friday. Bought a new car. Oh, that's Friday. Jack bought a new car last Friday. Not quite that. <laughs> Jack bought a new Whoa. car last Friday. Whoa. I mean, okay. Bought. Okay. Whoa. We're having some trouble with bought. Listen to how I pronounce bought. Bought. It sounds like bought. this. Bought. 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 Uh, bought or bought. Ah. Uh, when you're saying it, it's like ah, uh, bought, not both. Both. There, that's not right. There's no ow, oh, ow. Oh. It's ah. Uh, it's more open. Ah. Uh, bought. Bought. Yes, that's better. So it's not bought like that. Just because it's an OU, it doesn't always make an ow sound. It's more like an ah, bot, bot. So let's try, um, we're, all, we're out of time, but let's just read this one more time. <laughs> I put it in the chat. Jack I bought, bought a, new. a new car last Friday. Good, perfect. Jack bought a new car. So it wouldn't be Jack bought a new car last yeah. Friday. See how it's awkward? <laughs> so... You just kind of breeze over the function words. Um, does anyone have any questions? No. I'll give you guys some more sentences.